Hello gamers and thank you for watching. So, people have been asking if the DLC for Valhalla Wrath of the Druids is worth buying. I have the Ultimate Edition, so I have the DLC included. I've played it already for 2 days and let's now discuss the good and bad parts about it and warnings, you might see some small spoilers in this but I'll try to keep it as low as possible. As you know, in the game you will travel to Dublin and as Jose Araiza said in a post-launch trailer, we will have Dublin and we will have a lot of trading. And this is the first part that we encounter there. The main theme of the DLC is trading and the dark mystical world of the druids. When it comes to trading, we have a new shop. It's Azar's shop. And this is one of the new things they added. Here you will have the possibility to trade goods like clothes, luxuries, texts, delicacies for different weapons, armors and resources. The thing is they come as a pack, so you will trade 2 or 3 goods for a package of 2 or 3 items. The offers that Azar has will change and new items will be available if you increase the renown level. With each renown level you will unlock new contracts like Constantinople, Egypt and new items from that region will become available. To increase the renown level you have to offer to Azar goods. The goods can be located in monasteries or different camps. The best way to acquire goods is to capture trading posts. You have a few enemies there, you defeat them, go on a small quest to obtain a contract and you will claim the trading post. In each post you can construct 3 buildings, supply depot, storehouse and a worksman cottage. The normal production for each trade post is 1 item a minute, but you can increase it to 2 items a minute if you construct a workman's cottage. Each time you go to Azar's shop, you have next to him a chest which you can loot. It's actually what your trading posts produced so far. You loot that chest and then trade whatever you got with Azar. Just so you know, I left a lot of links in the description with armors, special weapons and mostly everything that you have to know about the game and you're gonna find more specific information down below in the description. In the game we see Dublin becoming a Christian town or actually already became a Christian town and we know that the Vikings slowly mixed with the locals and accepted Christianity. We will see crosses around Ireland and also the famous Celtic cross. To me Ireland didn't really seem like a new place and it's understandable, we have the same green fields, a similar landscape and most of the land is grass, some cliffs and some small mountains. To me it didn't feel like a new region and again it's normal, we have the same climate, same area of the world, same two regions which are close enough and not many differences in the landscape. Now, I mentioned earlier the renown level. Basically, it is the same as the settlement level back in Ravensturp. It is displayed over the green icon in Dublin and it's increased by completing contracts for Azar. The best way to complete contracts is a mixture of two things. You need to capture trading posts to have resources and also loot monasteries because they are also available in the game. And by looting monasteries you get trading posts resources which you can use to upgrade the trading posts and produce even more goods. Goods which can be traded at Azar's shop and increase the renown level. So, the entire season pass, which includes two DLCs, is worth $40. For this DLC alone, if you buy it, you will get 7 new free armors, 3 of them can be found around Ireland, and 4 can be traded for goods at Azar's shop. I left a link in the description with how you can get all these 7 armors. So, you can refer to that if you want to see all of them and also get a specific one, which is free, as I said. We have the Celtic Armor, the Druidic Armor, the Dublin Champion Armor, Iberian Armor, Ross Armor, Byzantine Greek Armor and the Egyptian Armor. One interesting thing we should know about this DLC is that the regions have a minimum level of 55. So it is recommended that you're above level 55 in order to play this DLC. But of course you will encounter way stronger enemies, there are two Drangers in West and North Ulster and you have a lot of mysteries called the Morrigan's Trials. And here you will fight hard bosses, a lot of different druids and some werewolves, which are quite difficult to beat. This trial is similar to the ones that we had in England where we ate a mushroom and hallucinated fights with various powerful enemies or beasts. We will encounter again the same cursed symbols that we had in England and we have to destroy them and clear the map. We will encounter also some artifacts like the Roman artifacts, only that Ireland wasn't conquered by the Romans, so instead we have the UI Neil artifacts. We also have the same flying artifacts which we need to collect, and these are the similarities between the two regions. One cool thing I noticed is that you have a lot of opals lying around. 
and they are not in remote places like the ones in England and usually find them next to a chest or close to your objectives. So if you buy the DLC you will surely get some opals from the map. As a reminder you can use the opals at Reda's shop and trade it for items. One extra thing is that the abilities have been expanded and you will be able to find on the map books of knowledge for a smoke bomb arrow, an Irish wolfhound and a vikinger salute. They are cool, I only unlocked the smoke bomb and the vikinger salute so far and don't really use them a lot but sure they are cool. An interesting thing we will find in the game are these small mazes and you will have to find your way through them and go to a certain mystery or artifact. I can't say they are hard but I mention them because it's a new thing they added in the game. Also another thing that's new and not present in England or other regions are the royal demands. These are requests from different kings for which if you complete them you will receive some resources and they have certain requirements which you can complete and you will get a bit more resources from them. These requirements could be to do a stealthy kill without being detected and not take any damage or to not do unnecessary kills. The map is quite big but distances between objectives felt really short. In a few hundred meters you reach your objectives normally. I explored most of the map and I have to say some bosses are really hard and they are mostly in the corners of the map. Thank you for watching once again, please like the video if you find it useful and also subscribe to my channel for more similar content. Goodbye.